aspiring to be a, a guide. Oh, you're talking about okay. Okay. Um, Are you talking about what you want to do in the future? E Wait, say the question again. I'm sorry. I'm Right. What I really, really want. All right, I got it. Um, okay, I don't want to start this. I, I do. I very, very well do aspire to be a guide in the close range or the close or the, the short term um, market. Um, probably in the north. I would say in the New England states at least, as I am a main guide. And I, I don't think that's long term. Long term, I would really want to run a school. Not quite what Tim does, not quite making guides or, or uh, helping people out to become a guide, but maybe show children, maybe right after high school, I would say, more permaculture skills and um, really just show them more of the outdoor energy. That's awesome. And, and you're young too, right? You're like yeah. 25? 25, yeah, I'm 25. I actually just turned 25 in July. Find most people that are 25, at least the people that I graduated with, which I, coming from Perry County in a small school, graduated with a class of 56 people, so not a whole lot. But most of them are actually like still in school, or um, there's a few farmers around. There's there's a few people because agriculture is really high here. Um, but most, a lot of them are still in school, and I've just been traveling for many years and. Um, opening my eyes up that way instead of opening them to a books. That's perfect. <laughs> um, so, do you feel like you're going to be kind of a, take on the teacher role when you're paired out in, in the wild with your partner? Mm. I wouldn't say I would be taking on the teacher role in this, in this um, when I'm paired with somebody out there. I think I, I'm going to use uh, uh, communication skills are really important and understanding her needs and my needs and working together. Teamwork is way more important than, than somebody being the leader or being the teacher in those shoes. So I think I'm going to at least try. It depends on my partner. A lot of it, I mean, obviously it depends on my partner, but the teamwork means everything. So if you put in a situation where that person is kind of an apex personality and, and wants to you know, kind of lead and tell you what to do. I mean, how do you, how do you feel like you're going to respond? Mm, that's interesting. Um, if that person is cocky, if my partner is cocky and trying to, you know, always telling me what to do or, or criticizing me on the ways that I was taught and the way I'm doing things, um, yeah, I could see that that being a potential problem. I mean, they're they're hurting the, the teamwork atmosphere, which probably is going to make safety a big issue and that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's going to be a clash between personalities is probably my biggest fear on, on this uh, Naked and Afraid. Um, yeah, it's, I'd probably rather be as a teacher than them though. <laughs> Wait, sorry, say that again? I, uh, I, I'd rather be the teacher than them. Like, you know, a lot of these, a lot of the survival experts I meet, they're like, you know, they've been doing this for years, and they've been around forever, and they've taught tons of classes. Do you feel like anyone ever, you ever get that, well, you're only 25, what do you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, not being very old, you, you definitely get, uh, not looked down upon, but people don't, they underestimate you because they think that you've only been out there for a couple years, or this is your, a new career path for you before. Um, a lot of adults think that most kids, at least my age or younger, are just involved with technology, so they don't think they have the outdoor skills. I, being a Perry County, and I, um, you know, grew up in the woods. I, I know a lot of skills. Tim up there in Maine taught me a lot of skills. I feel I can hold my own. I feel anybody smart enough to know the skills themselves will see that that I do know my own, um, and that I can hold my own, and. Um, I don't think my age is going to come into play. I mean, I guess in the long run, I hope my partner is. 
I wouldn't say you know older than me, but just seasoned in her education of the outdoors as well. Do you also like go to bars? <laughs> do I go to bars? Are you still kind of living the life of a, of a student in mid-20s? Yeah. Um, well, I, I take up odd jobs. I never hold like a, a long-term job, at least not in the last four years or so. Um, like right now I've been doing carpentry work. Um, how'd that go? In my high school, I went to Votech for three and a half years of construction. I think this is going to really help me in this show. I I'm really intuitive with my hands, I work really well, I can figure out how to build things or how to, to utilize the material that I have around me to create what I need. Um, so, you know, that, 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 that's going to be a big, a big plus. Yeah, I know, but what are your like, hobbies, I guess, that are not, I mean, do you have anything, like, what do you do Oh, other friends? hobbies. Do you hang out with friends? <laughs> oh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm really involved with music. I started, well, I guess... My dad's a lead guitar player and he wanted a drummer for a son, so he got me a drum set at like six years old and I've been drumming ever since. I moved more towards like the single like hand drums and um, like that kind, of per the, that kind of percussion than actually having a full trap set. But I also play a bunch of other instruments. I'm not currently involved in a band, but I do play around, fiddle around with music with a bunch of guys every once in a while. What kind of music do you listen to? Mm. Lately, my music, uh, the type that I put on high, like a lot of bluegrass. Um, but I also listen to like a lot of reggae and some like up paced reggae, not just Bob Marley, but like actually, you know, some really up music that way. I love blues, jazz, you know, <laughs> just weird music. My friend calls it elevator music. <laughs> Why? Well, elevator music is, um, I like to think, I enjoy music with pauses, like long pauses, and he's a, he's a metalhead, so his pauses are only for like for a half a second, but he says they matter anyway. But, um, I'm not putting down metal in any way, but I definitely enjoy the, the slow beats and the, the steady, soft roll of the music instead of the, uh, trudging along. <laughs> Being naked on the show. Um, no, I really don't think that matters. I mean, it's gonna come into play. Like, I, I totally understand why you won't let me just wear a pair of shorts because I'd find like figure out a way to filter water with my shorts or something like that, or or build something out of them. So I really understand the principles of being naked, and it is a great principle. I really, really, I'm going to really enjoy this challenge. Um. I mean, like, I, I think I know the skills, I think I'm, I'm positive, I have a good energy, um, but you don't really know until you're there. So, being naked is just going to be part of that challenge. Um, I'm sure, like, after the first day, you're going to kind of forget that you're naked, other than the fact that you're walking around barefoot. And, um, hopefully my partner has the same mindset as I do, because if not, it could be really uncomfortable for a month. <laughs> Like, you don't have any protection. Like, what if something, like, lines up you or in you or around you? <laughs> I don't know. Like, right. No, you're totally right. Yeah. Um, yeah, being naked in that, and um, for protection, yeah, that's, that's a big problem. Um, there's pros and cons. Pros would be, like, it's really easy to see if there's something attached to you, like a leech or a tick, or there's, you know, something even worse, because it's, right there, you don't have to dig through your clothes to find it, but um, it's going to be way easier for like a snake to land a bite or even the sun to come down and, and really, you know, blister your skin and stuff. So being naked is going to be important, but there's things to wear out there. Leaves, mud, stuff like that. So I'm sure I'm going to wear a good Tarzan outfit before the day's in, or before the uh, month's over. Awesome. Uh Uh, 
single? I don't think you're married, right? No, definitely not married. Um, totally single. Uh, single for like the last four years. I've really been. I spent these years really, really with me. I, I've moved around a lot. Like uh, I lived in Chicago for for like one of those years. I lived up north in Maine for another one of those years. Um, all that moving around, unless you have somebody to move around with you. Uh, it's pretty much impossible. I don't, I don't know about long distance relationships or they'll keep me away from things that I want to do and vice versa, so it's not really fair. I have a dog. He comes with me. It's nice to have a dog. Um, so if I hear me like, like one day on an island with a naked chick who's like-minded and loves outdoors, think anything might spark? Um... Hmm. Naked, outside, possibly on an island, with a female. Um, yeah. Something, something could happen. I have no idea what could happen. Um, we're gonna be really low energy, so I don't know how much effort we're gonna be putting into that. Uh, really, I guess you just really gotta take it day by day. Really, we could clash immediately, and that would not be an option, like, even a little bit, or... It, could be working and bonding together, and maybe you have a, lap, a lasting relationship for ever on. It's totally up in the air, hard to say. Are you going to miss your dog while you're out there? I'm going to miss my dog. I'm going to miss my dog greatly. His name is Al Joba, and uh, names him off of a star on in the constellation Leo. And um, He's a great dog. He, I, we go hiking. He carries his own weight. Carries his little little dog food dishes and, and like food and treats. And he drinks anywhere. He's trained really well. He goes to like the bottom of water sources to drink instead of drinking where us, you know, the, the humans that are hiking the trail to, to you know get the drink. So he, he's app or he's trail maimed or I don't know. I trained him well. Um, connected great. He sleeps right in my tent with me. Cold nights. Put him in my sleeping bag. Hold him. <laughs> I'll Joba. Wait, wait, have you trained your dog to go out on like the wilderness trip? Oh, my dog is, is more trained than that. Um, he's been out for weeks at a time, hiking at um, 15, 20 mile day paces. Um, we, we hike around three, about three miles an hour all day long. Um, he's also a crag dog, which means I, I go climbing, I go climbing a lot, climbing is great. And uh, he just hangs out at the bottom of the mountain while I'm climbing up. He's not chained or, or anything. He just waits for me. And I come down. I usually have treats in my pocket. And I give him one. He's all happy. But it's great. Like, he'll let out one bark, letting me know that somebody else is coming up the trail. He'll stick to our pack and our stuff. People leave that alone. He's, he's like a 35-pound um, terrier cattle dog mix. So he's real smart up there. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I think he could do this. I think Aljoba would, would uh, really enjoy hanging out there with me. I, I don't know what I would what I would feed him. That would be pretty tough. I would, he would have to. Um, I don't even know where I'm going, but I, I don't know. Like his diet's pretty strict. Uh, he, he eats like sled dog food, so he doesn't he doesn't have to carry a whole lot while he's hiking. Um, so he might be mad at that. I mean, like not crazy strict. He he definitely enjoys some pizza with me while I'm eating it, but. Um, yeah, I think he really could do this. He would definitely enjoy it. He might just be really tired. <laughs> El Joba. That's so cool. I think that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's, um, he's a good partner. Go ahead. No, he's just a really good partner. Um, I mean, is there anything that... that I mean, he, he seems super confident in being able to complete these 21 days. Do you, just, do you think 21 days is going to be easy? No, in no way is this 21 days going to be easy. I know this, um, the Appalachian Trail that I hiked, which goes from like northern Georgia to northern Maine, 2,176.8 miles when I hiked it in 2009, that took me five months and six days, and right now I, I reminisce and only think about like the really positive and the really good things, but if I really dig back there, there's some really deep times, times where you're just crying for days, and it's... You know, there's, it's, it's tough, and I, I can directly relate that to what is 
to come in this 21 days in the naked and afraid. I know that there's going to be really hard times, but I know that um, with the same attitude that I approached the Appalachian Trail with, you know, the end will come, and, and when it does, it will be rewarding. So you can just totally look back, and all those hard, hard times just kind of blur and disappear over all the glory that you get from it. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, is that why you want to do this? Oh, why I want to do this? Yeah, it's a challenge. It's, it's uh, the next step, the challenge. I have a website that would be great to like promote or like at least get me on the map so people will start paying interest to me. Um, Eco Reverent is my website and it would be great for after this to something actually happen and then I could use that page to, to become a guide. So, um, no, there's a, there's a lot of reasons for this, but a lot of the reason or the, the biggest reason is I feel it is like the next step. I really got to prove to myself what I can do and prove to the others um, that I can do it. Um, I think there's, I think that's, I mean, was, is there something else we talked about that I didn't, like a, a big thing that we talked about last time that I haven't asked you? Yeah, about? um, maybe like my strengths and weaknesses, or like my biggest fear, did we cover that? Uh, um, <laughs> what, what are, I mean, yeah, it's only your strengths and weaknesses. Alright, um, yeah. Strengths and weaknesses, I mean obviously I would say my strengths are, well my biggest strength I would say is endurance. Um, I, I fast normally as it is, I know that most of this is going to be borderline starvation. Um, I know that going in, so the whole time from day one as soon as I walk out of the truck and, and start stripping I know that it's all going to be about energy, um, utilizing the energy that I have, energy consumption and that. So. Uh, my strengths, I would say, is endurance and my choices, my reasoning skills, um, and my skills that, that go along with that, that obviously better my reasoning skills. Uh, weaknesses, depending on who my partner is, we clash there, uh, I would say weaknesses would be the unknown factors, weather, location, like right now there's a lot of worries in my head, I have no, excuse me, no idea where I'm going to be <laughs> shipped off to, or the climate. If it's going to rain a lot, or if it's not going to rain at all, if the weather's going to be insanely hot, or you're going to have to have a fire just to make it through the night because of how cold it gets. Um, so those factors, um, I don't say worried, but like you take things one day at a time, and your your reasoning is one day at a time. But they are worrying right now. Um, what was the other thing? Strengths, weaknesses. What was the other thing I told you? Um, you're just telling me your strength that we just did. You didn't say you have, like, the any fear. Oh, fears. Hmm. Well, I guess greatest fear overall is not completing it, or having the energy or the willpower to completing it and not being able to, whether I break something or get bitten or poisoned or that kind of stuff. Um, you know, like really having the drive and the dedication to get through it, or get through it, but not being able to because of some physical barrier that I just can't overcome. Basically, like an uncontrollable circumstance that makes you have to leave. Right. Totally uncontrollable. I mean, it's possible depending on where you send us. Like uh, down south, South America and stuff, you totally could get flooded out and it wouldn't even be possible to live there depending on some places or places where there is no water and there really is not water and you just can't make it. So, mm hmm. It's still there, it's totally there.